as part of Aggregate Intellect's workshop on ML Ops, I will now be presenting our team's work on named entity recognition for news organizations. Our team consists of Dmitry Tadashev, who did model packaging and deployment, Nicholas Broad, who did UI, Spacey Burt, LSTN model development, the presentation and project management, and Prasad C. McCarthy, who developed the LSTN model with CRF and looked into use cases and potential impact, and finally Vikram Kot, who did model training and testing. News organizations produced hundreds of articles and videos each day, and some of the questions they have after making all of these are, how should the articles be grouped? What keywords should each article get? How should coverage be measured? And how do you track trends in competitors' stories? We propose Named Entity Recognition, NER, as a solution to the problems previously mentioned. NER can tag important words in text, such as a person, an organization, a location, or a miscellaneous proper noun that doesn't fall into the first three categories. Here's how NER can be used to help news organizations. Identical and similar NER tags can be used to group articles. NER tags can be used as keywords to improve search results. Counting NER tags can quantify coverage to ensure even reporting on political candidates or similar topics. And finally, running NER on rival stories can help keep a news organization always on top of trending names or stories. Here are the differences between NER and regular expressions. NER has the potential to tag brand new, unseen entities, but it can also be unpredictable. Regular expressions, on the other hand, will always get exactly what was asked, but they offer no flexibility for new entities. Here's an example of named entity recognition in action. We have things like locations, dates, names, and organizations being tagged. This dataset comes from the Conference on Computational Natural Language Learning in 2003. While there are only four different entities, there is the additional task of determining whether a token is at the beginning of an entity or somewhere inside. There are about 7,000 examples of each entity in the training set, and the text is taken from a news corpus. This works well with our goal of helping news organizations. An example from the dataset is in the bottom right corner. The data are arranged in four columns. The first and fourth are the important ones. The far left has the tokens, and the far right has the tagged entities. From top to bottom, there's a beginning of location entity, a non-entity, a beginning of person entity, and an inside of person entity. We decided to use Spacey as the baseline model. Spacey is an open source library for natural language processing, and it is easy to do fine-tuned training and evaluation. Spacey does not have great documentation about their model, but we do know that it is pre-trained on onto nodes using residual CNNs and Bloom embeddings. We used their smallest pre-trained model for convenience sake. The second model we decided to try was an LSTM. LSTM stands for Long Short-Term Memory. As the model processes each word sequentially, it can remember words at the beginning of the sentence to get a deeper understanding of the sentence as a whole. To convert text to a form the model can understand, each unique word was assigned a number. This technique offers no out-of-vocabulary support and each number offers no contextual meaning. This is easier to implement and offers good performance when the model does recognize the word. The final model we used was a pre-trained BERT model. BERT stands for bidirectional encoder representations for transformers. The term non-directional is perhaps more suited as the model looks at each word in a sentence simultaneously. In previous RNN models, there's only the capability to look left to right and right to left as seen in the diagram on the bottom right. BERT has many layers of transformers, self-attention heads, feed-forward networks, and over 100 million parameters. It uses a Gaussian error linear unit activation function and a word piece tokenizer. The word piece tokenizer can split words into subword tokens, increasing the model's vocabulary significantly. BERT is regarded as one of the best NLP models around, and we expected it to have the best performance. Here's a table showing our results. Overall, BERT had the best performance, but it also took considerably longer to train. The LSTM had surprisingly good performance considering it only had one minute of training time. And finally, Spacey did the worst, but it served as a good baseline model to get the project going. 
At this point, we wanted to see if we could modify parameters to further increase our performance. The first parameter we looked at was dropout. This controls how many neurons are randomly turned off during training, and it can help make more robust models. The graphs show precision versus dropout rate. The right graph is a zoom in of the top of the left graph. Any dropout rate from 0.05 to 0.3 will get roughly the same results, with 0.1 doing the best. We then optimized our learning rate and our batch size to achieve our best BERT model. Our F1 score increased from 91.2 to 91.8. We deployed a dockerized BERT model to Azure and found that it is relatively easy to implement using Hugging Faces Transformers package. Moreover, out of the three models, BERT had the largest vocabulary, making it more flexible to adapt to new words. When we first tried to deploy Spacey, we ran into some issues, but the community on GitHub was very responsive. The Spacey flavor of MLflow was only recently launched, so it still had many bugs to work out. To get around this obstacle, we used the generic PyFunk flavor to package our models. Because we used Docker, we did not have a single dependency or environment problem. And finally, it's surprising to see how straightforward the API integration is when using Flask. Here is a diagram of our final deployment pipeline. We would package up our models with MLflow, and then when we committed it to GitHub, we would trigger an automatic build on Azure, creating a new Docker container. This would all result in a front-facing user interface via Flask. We've also documented our API using Postman. A Git request will return the NER tags in HTML format, which makes it easy for our web app to use. A POST request will return it in JSON format. Our GitHub repository and our web application are both publicly available at these addresses. Here is a demo of our web application. In this text box, I'm going to paste information about the members of our group. I'll hit Submit, and it's going to come back tagged with the entities that the model has decided are in the sentence. So here, each of our names is tagged as a, a person entity, and it also marks whether it's the beginning or inside that person. It doesn't perfectly get, you know, first name, last name, uh, but it is able to pick up all of our names. <clears throat> it gets each location where we live. It picks up the organization that this workshop is a part of. And it also picks up that Canadian is a miscellaneous entity because it's a proper noun that doesn't really fall under the other categories. Now let me go to a website based around news and pull up a headline. Copy and paste it in. And again, it's going to tag the uh, important entities it finds in the sentence. So we have uh, miscellaneous, corona, and COVID-19. We have a person, Trump, and we have an organization, WHO. And the slight difference in green is because the CO is marked as the beginning of the entity and RONA is marked as the inside of the entity. The other section we have in our web application is the headline section, which calls CNN's API, and then it runs NER, on all of those headlines. It takes a little bit of time, but here are all the sections at CNN that we've set up. So things like the United States, the world, business, politics, opinion, travel, entertainment, and style. So if we focus on the United States section, I'm gonna to go to CNN, and I'm gonna to go to the latest US stories. And the latest US stories should be the the same as the ones that we have here. So the top one, some nursing homes are taking residents' stimulus checks, and then coronavirus pandemic, Floridians rejoice. So we come up here, some nursing homes are taking residents' stimulus checks, Floridians rejoice, and Magic Johnson, Magic Johnson.